Uh, my name's Brad Loveless. I'm the Director of Biology and Conservation Programs for Westar Energy. And today we're at Lawrence Energy Center, which is a coal-fired power plant situated on the Kansas River, just to the north and west of Lawrence, Kansas. We're in the, the circulating water pump house where we draw water from the Kansas River. It goes through the plant, uh, uh, cools down our, our equipment our, in our condensers, and then gets passed uh, through some towers to cool it down before it's discharged back into the Kansas River. So that's how we use the, the cooling water uh, from the Kansas River to benefit our plant. Our water use does vary throughout the year uh, based on how many units we have on at a given time. So there is a fair amount of variation as we go through a, a year. At our power plants that use cooling water, we have three right here on the Kansas River, including this one. Uh, we've been watching for, for zebra mussels for a few years, expecting at some point that they'd arrive. Well, in 2009 when we were notified by Wildlife and Parks that they had been found in a reservoir just upstream of here, uh, we knew they were coming our way. And so we'd been investigating different options for uh, treatment of zebra mussels so they wouldn't become a problem with our plant. And so once, as soon as we heard that there was a confirmation of their occurrence, we got, we evaluated this technology amongst others and decided we wanted to go with the copper ion treatment technology here at Lawrence Energy Center. Copper ion technology is really simple. In fact, it's, it's almost too simple to believe. Uh, as we looked at different options, we, we kept thinking this has got to be more expensive, it's got to be more complicated, but really this is very simple. What you see beside me is, is the generator, and this is the whole unit right here. Very simple, all we have is, is an electrical component where we put a, a very low voltage through a, a copper anode, a big chunk of copper metal. That's situated in the back. And you run that, that small current through the copper, it frees up some, some uh, ions, copper ions, and then as the water circulates through this, it just picks up those ions and carries them through our, our circulating water system. Copper, as with most metals, will be lethal at high concentrations to almost anything. The benefit to this system is that you're using copper in tiny amounts, four to five parts per billion. At those levels, it's really not in a lethal concentration, but it has a really interesting effect on zebra mussels. With zebra mussels spread uh, as larvae when they're planktonic, they're, they're light enough, they're carried by currents. And so when those are, are, are leave the adults, they're carried through the water currents into our plant. Ordinarily, they look for a, a calm place where they can settle. They develop a thread where they can attach, and then they develop a hard shell um, that, and, and they remain there, and then they're very hard to get rid of. But as planktonic larvae, they're very susceptible to chemicals, and even at four to five parts per billion copper, even though that's very low, that's enough to where they're uncomfortable, and they basically move on through our system. They decide it's not hospitable for them to feed and to, and to set up housekeeping, and so they simply move through. It doesn't even kill them at those levels. It just passes them through out back to the Kansas River. So the, the great benefit, of course, is because it doesn't uh, kill them at those low levels, it doesn't affect other organisms in the Kansas River. Any other treatment we would use would have to be high enough to, to affect the, the mussels, but not high enough to impact the other critters out there. And that's very, very hard to do. But with copper, those low levels, we can accomplish both. We have looked at, at other uh, plants that are, are using this technology. There weren't a lot out there, but we visited with one a nuclear plant in Illinois, and they had a, an excellent record with these. They had uh, zebra mussels on site that they were dealing with. They had several years of experience where they had used the same system, been very effective, and uh, so based on their recommendation and then some other uh, recommendations we had around the country, we said this is a technology for us. One of the reasons why this was almost too good to be true was because of the low cost. Um, with chemical treatments, you're talking about ongoing expense plus the initial cost of, of developing the injection equipment. With this, we had to do the injection part, which as you can see is pretty simple. We just brought a line off our circulating water system. This unit itself was very inexpensive, less than $20,000. You have to replace the, the chunk of copper every year. That's not very expensive. So 
for each, each of our plants where we've installed this, given all the plant changes that need to take place, plus the units, we were talking under $200,000 for each of these units. So on, at, a, at a power plant, that's a very inexpensive addition. We have just shy of 700,000 customers in the eastern part of Kansas that we serve. And uh, a substantial part of our, of our power is provided to commercial customers. But in terms of numbers, it's residential customers in general. That's who we cover most. Um, we, uh, we have been uh, in business for over 100 years. And uh, so that, that number's built up over time and it continues to grow. We've worked with Wildlife and Parks, Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks for ever on all kinds of environmental issues. And this is just the latest one. Um, we knew that zebra mussels were coming. We, before that, we knew corbicula were coming. And so uh, we've been in contact with them. We know they have a monitoring network. We were doing some monitoring of our own, uh, watching for when they would show up at those very lowest levels that would let us know that we had to get, get active. What we did was we put a program in place, um, but didn't install any of that equipment. Uh, because we knew we had short lead times, uh, but we wanted to wait till they actually showed up on our doorstep. As soon as we got that word, then we went to in installing that. In terms of our relationship with those agencies, we, uh, we knew that zebra mussels were coming, and there's a number of other invasive species that were coming, and so we um, lobbied for them to have an invasive species specialist on their staff and help support that when, when they knew that money would be tight to get that initiated. And so we were there at the beginning because we knew that had broad benefits for, for Kansas, but particular benefits for us as a, as a power utility that uses a lot of water. Um, since uh, Jason got on staff with Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks, we've, we've been partners on workshops. Uh, we've sent out uh, information notices in our bills because we have uh, a large customer base uh, in the, the bills we send out, we can put a flyer in that talks about uh, zebra mussel awareness and uh, tries to spread the word and educate people. So we, in the utility, uh, you, you have a lot of reach with customers. And so we've used that to our advantage and hopefully to this whole state's advantage to educate people about zebra mussels and the threat they pose. At West Our Energy, we take our role as a, as a corporate and community citizen very seriously. And so we try to look at broad perspectives. Certainly when it came to zebra mussels and the threat they pose, as a water user, they, they, they were going to have an impact on us. But anybody who uses water is going to be impacted by zebra mussels. And so, so nobody can opt out of being worried about zebra mussels. So the message that we have is true for, for every water treatment plant, every industrial user, as well as every utility that's out there. We recognized that zebra mussels were coming sooner or later, and so for us, it was important to be prepared when they came, be vigilant, watch them for those first signs, and be ready to act very quickly, because we are aware of the horror stories of folks that waited and had plant problems, shutdowns, really catastrophic uh, problems as a result of, of kind of keeping their head in the sand and not, not being prepared. So, so uh, you, you pay up front some, you'll pay a lot more down the road if you aren't proactive.